very good evening to all uh, professor dr chandi george the principal of st mary's college sultan bateri the seminar coordinator misha t elias busar professor john matai uh, ladies and gentlemen all the participants let me uh, at the outset also extend a great gratitude to my friend professor gibson before i start the presentation <coughs> dear friends this presentation is uh, structured into three main sections uh, the iqc chairman already explained that uh, why these kind of presentations are required to poster creativity through promotion and management of intellectual property rights in higher educational institutions so the first section would look at various policy imperatives that are required to follow by higher educational institutions secondly we look at a brief overview of intellectual property rights the laws that govern those rights the current trends in india and finally we will look at the complexities associated with ownership of intellectual property rights in academic institutions so why ipr is important to higher educational institutions across india if you look at these days the policies prescriptions enable higher education institutions to improve their ranking establish an innovation ecosystem incubate knowledge based startups and additional revenue and measure research activity etc in higher educational institutions so it is very imperative to manage intellectual property rights at higher educational institution because various regulatory authorities push for establishing such a kind of innovative ecosystem and ip centers university grants commission ask all universities and higher educational institutions to set up ip centers in their particular institutions if you look at national Ra institute ranking framework which demands institutions based or ranks institutions based on the number of patents applied for granted and commercialized the nac awards points to, to institutions with an innovation ecosystem and a facility for identifying and promoting intellectual property so both the ugc and act also recommend changes property education in all institution across india so every stakeholder in a higher educational institutions whether it is administrators the professors the and faculties the researchers or the students now need to know the basics of intellectual property and learn how to identify protect manage and commercialize them if you look at the national ipr policy which has been published in 2016 specifically the objective 7 the human capital development exclusively mentioned to strengthen and expand human resources institutions and capacities for teaching training research and skill building in intellectual property there is an institution called rajiv gandhi national institute of intellectual property management at nagpur to train administrators teachers academicians etc ugc prescriptions are there that 
IPR trials need to be initiated across higher education institutions in India, introduce multidisciplinary IP courses, make IPR an integral part of the curriculum, formulate institutional IP policy, introduce IP teaching schools, colleges, educational institutions, <coughs> sorry, facilitate industry association, inventor and create associations at uh, institutional level, develop distance learning and online courses on IP, strengthen IP teaching, research and training in collaboration with World Intellectual Property Organizations, World Trade Organization and various international organizations. And encourage and support capacity building among women creators. This is a very new, new idea. So dear friends, if you look at NIRF, if you look at the various guidelines of UGC, the national IPR policy that synergize or synchronize various species of intellectual property rights, you will come across that all these policies and institutions is trying to foster creativity in higher education institution through intellectual property rights. Now you will see a picture. This picture is very important in the context of intellectual property rights. This is the Office of the Controller General of Patents, Designs and Trademarks. This office is work under Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade under Ministry of Commerce and Industry. You will see there are various sessions. For example, there is patents here, then designs, trademarks, geographical indications. Now, these are the various species that constitute intellectual property rights. There are many other two which we will discuss in the following PPT. Now you look at the structure, how it is this Office of Controller General of Patents, Designs and Trademarks govern the entire intellectual property rights. There is Rajiv Gandhi National Institute of Intellectual Property and Management at Nagpur. All the metros, major metros like Kolkata, Delhi, Chennai and Mumbai have patent office. There is a design office at Kolkata. Trademark office also there is in all metros and besides that there is in Ahmedabad you will see geographical indications registry at Chennai you have a semiconductor integrated circuit layout design so registry at Delhi copyright registry at Delhi these are these are the through various offices the government of India govern intellectual various species of intellectual property rights now this is a table which explains the current scenario of IP applications. There is patent, design, trademark, geographical indication, copyrights, semiconductor, integrated layout designs. If you look at all these species, the most important species is semiconductor integrated layout designs. You can see where India stands. In 2017-18, we had two applic pet, uh, applications. I don't know whether you know what is it. These are called microchips. Today, if you look at read newspapers on political economy, you will come across why United States of America and China is competing each other on various miniature of microchips that we need to be developed because it keeps the competitive advantage in the global political economy. Having said that, you look at the patent applications. 50,659 applications are filed in 2019 in various offices across India. Design there are 12,585, trademark 3,23,000, copyright 18,250. But you may say, when you see all these numbers, you will see that it is a very remarkable achievement. But the question that we need to ask ourselves, 
how many indian applications are there which will also we will explain in later so dear friends many of us especially the beginners of intellectual property rights consider intellectual property rights means a single species no it is a set of exclusive rights protected by law which are accorded to creators or innovators for a certain time period time period is very necessary so there is a monopoly over that during that time period for that particular inventor or innovator and he or she will get chance to license or provide his innovation or invention to uh, through the industry through various licensing and mechanisms that is called licensing or assignment now the protection of intellectual property rights or the innovations and creativity no are not only really being a tool to protect creativity and generate revenue but also to build strategy hello salvin sir hello hello maybe sir can join again once again let him join am i there yes sir welcome back okay sorry yes, where sir, did i 
Uh, yes, stopped at. Which slide I was? Uh, I think. Well, uh, after the definition of intellectual property right, that slide was there. Okay. 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 So let me now start with uh, uh, the Patents Act 1970, which is amended in 2002 and 2005. Uh, the patent means in patent for any invention granted under this patent act. So invention means an inventive step for both product as well as for process. And such inventive step is also capable of industrial application. So this industrial application is very necessary because many of the educational institutions do innovate things, invent th many things, but they never license such invention for industrial application in India. So this is a major uh, problem because of the lack of awareness. Now inventive step means what? Inventive step means this particular invention involves a technical advance and it is has got a certain economic significance to the market. So new invention. So we are looking at invention, inventive step, new invention means that particular technology or invention has not fallen in the public domain or that it does not form part of the state of the art, means the recent developments. Excuse the me, sir. Patent sir please share your screen also, yeah. PPT. Sir, oh, you please see. share your PPT oh. also, please. Yeah, yeah, we cannot. Okay, okay. Can you see now? Yes, sir. We can see now. It's visible. So the last slide I was speaking about invention, in inventive step and the new inventions, how it is. Most important part in this slide is that, that an invention should be capable of industrial application and it should not be part of the public domain. Now, the patent act in 1970, chapter 2 explains what inventions are not patentable. Any kind of frivolous invention that are not economically viable or very silly cannot be patentable. Any invention that cause public order or violate morality cannot be uh, patented. An abstract theory or a discovery of any living thing, living thing cannot be uh, patented. A mere discovery of any new property, a new uh, property of a, any, any uh, material cannot be uh, invented. Aggregation of the properties of uh, any mixture, doing any mixture and creating something, that also cannot be invented. Or duplication of the non uh, devices or rearrangement or reverse engineering, etc., cannot be invented, uh, in, uh, patented. A method of agriculture or uh, horticulture cannot be patented. Any process in medicinal, surgical, curative, um, diagnostic, therapeutic, etc., cannot be patented. Plants and animals cannot be patented. Mathematical or business method cannot be patented. Literary, dramatic, all these only comes under copyright. A mental act or any kind of playing game, etc., cannot be uh, patented. This presentation cannot be patented. Uh, topography of integrated circuits cannot be patented. Any no traditional knowledge that are available in the public domain cannot be patented. Any atomic energy uh, relating inventions cannot be patented. So. The chapter 2 of the 1970 Patent Act is very clearly states what is not inventable in terms of uh, patentable in terms of when you uh, seek for a patent, an invention to be uh, patented. 
if you look at the current trends in patent applications i have already told you that there are 50659 applications are filed and 85000 85000 means previous applications also including 426 have been examined but granted only 15283 and if you look at this disposal that includes the application includes patent granted refused and the applications abandoned or withdrawn by the applicants these are the current in 2018 19 but if you see over the period there is uh, around uh, 5.9% of increase of applications over the year now if you look at the latest changes that have been brought to the uh, patent at 1970 you will see that there are new rules implemented in 2000 70 to simplify the patent procedures through digitalization process and also you will see that startup is considering as an entity for applying inventions and also you will see that the major fields from which this patent inventions are coming from are communication physics food agricultural engineering and general engineering the most saddest part of this current trend is that out of 50659 applications there are only indian applicants was 17005 though there is a 9% increase from 2018 that indian applications were in 2018 we were around 15550 now let us see what is the kerala's position in 2019 kerala was able to file around 272 patent applications and we have 13th position if you look at maharashtra tamil nadu and karnataka are the states that are leading in patent applications in india now these are the major institutions especially in the field of information technology you have tcs tata and consultancy service wipro chandigarh university chandigarh group of colleges indian institute of technology in collective etc are the major institution that apply for patents in india research institutions if you look at you have csir uh, drdo indian institute of science all those there are 10 institutions universities you have indian institute of technology that is called iit or chandigarh university amity university um, indian institute of science lovely professional these are the various universities that are uh, primarily applying for patents in india out of 50659 applications the major uh, country that apply in india or apply for patent in india comes from united states of america followed by japan china germany korea so these up countries application through patent cooperation treaty any national or any country can apply for uh, patent in india so they make use of that but the thing is that we have only 17000 applications in in uh, in application for patents now the second most important species after patent is copyright copyright is a right given to creators of literary dramatic musical artist works producers of cinematograph films and sound recordings one of the major difference in copyright is this 
Is it registration of copyright is necessary? This is a question many people ask. Many think that copyright registration is a mandatory, but it is not. Registration of copyright is not mandatory as the registration is treated as a mere record of a fact. But India, since being a developing country and um, many of the people do not have awareness and there is a lot of infringement in such occasions, registration of copyright can be used as a proof of ownership in courts in, or in front of police authorities, etc. The duration of the copyright it is lifelong, uh, lifetime of the author or the artist, and 60 years after means posthumously 60 years. For example, if I die and I have a patent right, my children or my wife, etc., can use it for 60 years and they can get royalty out of it or copyright. And uh, in the case of cinematograph, films, sound recordings, etc., you can use it for. Um, 60 years period of protection. You will get 60 years of from the date of publication. Now, how copyright is operating or functioning in India? The protection and management of copyright in India is happening through copyright societies registered in India. <coughs> Especially in the management and the protection of copyright in what are undertaken by a society of others. That society of others is called Indian Performing Rights Society for Musical and Literary Works associated with musical work. For photocopy works, it is called Indian Reprographic Rights Organization. For performance rights of singers and other activity, it is called Indian Singers Rights Association. Now, why these societies are important? When you become a member of any one of these copyright society, that society, because of its organizational facilities and strength, is able to keep a better vigil, vigil over the use made of the work throughout the country and collect due royalties from the usage of those work. And also these societies, uh, India being a party to international conventions, if such work is used in the foreign countries, then these societies can collect royalties from uh, foreign countries also for uh, obtaining license for legal exploitation of this your work. Now, if you look at the current trend, please look at this side. The total application received is in 2018-19 is around 18,250. Examined is cumulatively, including previous years, it is 22,658. But copyright registration is generated only for 14,625. Letter issued further, a copyright registration letter is issued only to 7951. The total disposal that I already explained to you earlier, that including uh, the rejection, uh, the abandoned application, etc., 25,943. Now, I don't have a chat data on how many Indians have and uh, uh, applied and how many foreigns. Mostly in copyright, it is Indian applications. Now, one of the recent phenomenon that happened with regard to copyright is that copyright office was early, earlier it was operating under MHRD. Currently, it is known as Ministry of Education. Now, it has been transferred to Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, the picture I have shown you. And subsequently, it has been under the control general of patent designs and trademarks in, since 2016 and 17. Now, the latest is that the process of application also is digitalized and uh, manpower is increased. Because of that, earlier if an application was pending there for 13 months to come to know whether you get a uh, registration or not, today 
or recently it is only one month it required because of the digitalization process and the manpower is increased etc and also every month uh, this cgpd tm uh, display the number of application received and the number of applications uh, disposed etc in every month and also you can track your uh, status of the, your application through online now if i uh, write a book in 2020 and even without registration or even in the re through registration you will get see this symbol in your book at the rate salvin paul 2020 if you look at any book this will be there that is once you get isbn it will be there. so it is a mere record of factual but it is not uh, mandatory to register but at the same time it is always safe if you register you can um, for legal uh, litigation and process etc that will help you sorry So next is, next is trademark. Trademark in India is governed by Trademark Act 1999, which has got trademark rules, which is made in 2002, but it is enforced in 2003, and it is later on amended recently in 2017. And uh, uh, since the system March 2017, there are trademark rules that govern the trademark under the Trademarks Act 1999. Now, trademark, what is a trademark? Trademark is a mark capable of being as represented graphically and which is capable of distinguishing the goods or services of one person from those of others. And that may include shape of goods, their packaging and combination of colors, etc. And in this act, mark also is defined. Mark is, could be a device, a brand, a heading, a label, a ticket, name, uh, or signature, word, letter, or a numeral, a shape of goods, a packaging, or combination of colors, etc. These are the various uh, marks that are used for trademark, uh, under the trademark. If you look at the trademark trend in India for last five years, uh, it is very encouraging because you will see that more than 323,000 applications are there and it has been examined and registered and almost registered 3,16,000. This is very encouraging in the context of trademarks. And um, there is a growth of 5% annually in the trademark applications. Now, in 2017, uh, rules has made a lot of changes in the trademark rules because earlier it was very horrendous to uh, fill 73 application forms. Uh, today it is only eight forms you need to fill and um, application provided for all types of trademark application one application is provided and today there are concessions and encouragement to, to startups individuals and small enterprises you can interact with the trademark office through video conferencing email is considered as a major uh, communication medium and um, you have minimum two uh, uh hearings within uh, and after every 30 days you can do and um, there is 10 percent concession to the fees and uh, entire trademark prosecution procedures is of on payment of fees etc is uh, expedited and the filing of the extension of for submission of affidavit and evidences have been also removed so that it is very easy for you people to uh, uh, make a trademark registered so these are the if you look at in the same way like copyright if you see this signature uh, see this is a signature for that is a particular um, uh, design or a mark is registered and if you see tm that means that trademark is not registered but it is used 
Their SM, if you see, used to be the service mark, not at registered, because these are the uh, major trademark symbols that are available. There are many, but I just used to to, uh, to go two, three, four, uh, making you to understand what is a trademark. You will see Airtel, Geo, uh, Vodafone, even Facebook. So many things uh, use trademarks. You understand as a symbols. The next one is design. Uh, design is governed under uh, industrial uh, uh, administrator governed under Design Act 2002, 2000, and it is repealed that of 1911, which was existing in India uh, before um, India got independence. And we have a design rules 2001, which is amended in 2008 and in 2014. So the current rule that are applicable is uh, is enforced from 30th December 2014, um, which also incorporate the startup or small entity in addition to natural person or other than natural person in, who can apply for design. The industrial design is a creation of a new or original feature of a new shape or a configuration or a surface pattern or ornamentation and composition of lines or colors applied to articles in a in the finished state and it has to be judged solely by our vision or our eye the duration of rotation earlier was given uh, it is for 10 years and you can extend it for further year five more years and maximum protection for a design uh, you can get only 15 years in india the design trends application also is uh, okay especially there are 12000 585 applications were filed and registered 9,483 and disposal was 11,000 and there is a 6% growth over the years for the last five years. <clears throat> In the listed, recent recent, if you see that you can uh, apply make e-filing facility has been introduced so that the uh, pending applications all are uh, expedited and from uh, you can do uh, one month filing from the date so the six percent of uh, increase is there the application uh, over the years and uh, what is most important thing is that within a month your application will get a, a, a answer from uh, the registry this is the most important uh, uh, semiconductor integrated circuit the species under intellectual property rights but india has got a very very uh, very sad and poor uh, application process in this uh, semiconductor integrated circuits are fabricated from a complex series of layers of semiconductors metals dielectrics dielectrics um, and other materials on a substrate that and rules refer to three-dimensional configuration of these layers as an integrated circuit layout. The most advanced uh, uh, technology in these areas are happening in microchip. And this is very important in the context of artificial intelligence, space exploration, even we every day use it in our mobile, etc., in laptop, computer, mobile, etc. It is called a microchip process in the, in the current context. So if you three uh, distinct um, Criteria, if you have it, it can be if it is original, distinctive, and capable of distinguishing from any other layout design. The sad thing is that 2017 18, there were only three applications, and 2018 19, three applications, 17 18, there were only two applications. And these are the microchip, uh, you know, which are available in the market. You can see here, this is a chip which is very miniature in the and this is also and in the case of artificial intelligence microchips are going to define the new competition and a new technological hegemony in the world so there is a great competition between united states of america and china in the advancement of microchips or the semiconductor and we are very very much lagging behind plant variety is uh, a kind of uh, protection that is available for advanced or hybrid seeds or um, for farm aids and for uh, um, 
hybrid companies that are based on biotechnology so it uh, recognize the contributions of both commercial plant breeders and farmers in plant breeding activity and uh, it, it take care of all the interest of that is what it is told it is private public and research institution as well as uh, the resource constrained farmers interest are taken care but there are a lot of contestations whether um, i don't know whether you know here the case of monsanto and uh, um, artificial or hybrid brinjals etc in india which uh, is challenged by a lot of farmers and they are telling that uh, no there is there they will have to uh, great dependency on these commercial plant breeders in future and uh, you cannot um, patent or register a plant which is available from wilderness or forest etc but you can also um, um, register a uh, plant that is domesticated and improved through human interventions and uh, uh, that is also eligible for registration in the plant variety act 2001 and uh, the four criteria that are necessary for getting registration of a a uh, new seed or a new variety is novel and distinct that is already we have explained but uniform uniform is that it is expected from the particular features of its propagation it is sufficiently uniform its essential characteristics in the in the uh, other variation also that is very necessary stable also is that, that essential characteristics remain unchanged after repeated propagation so this is so these are the two important but i have a great doubt on this to because if you look at the darwin's evolution theory after every fourth generation there is a lot of changes so maybe this uh, uniformity is demanded in the particular generation because in subsequent generation there is a lot of mutations and changes that happens now there are three types of varieties available for registration that is new variety uh, that is especially um, made under the made by the um, plant breeders then a stand variety that is um, uh, that is um, it is there is no it, these are existing plants that are discovered and uh, um, made human intervention for advancement farmers variety this is a very important thing um, farmers variety means a variety which has been traditionally cultivated and evolved by the farmers in their fields such a varieties also can be um, registered under plant variety act 2001 and along with this uh, there is biodiversity act which also uh, denies certain times the foreign multinational companies for um, bio breeding in india the certificate of uh, registration is issued for 3 years from the date of within 3 years from the date of application or date of filing and uh, mostly for trees and wine wines you get 18 years of um, protection and for other crops you get 15 years of protection and a stand varieties that is the current existing varieties you get only 15 years after that it all becomes part of the public domain and uh, but at the same time these all varieties and breeds can be used for experiment purpose by researchers and uh, for creating and developing new uh, varieties new breeds etc so there is no problem this act particularly allows research uh, in for conducting research etc geographical indication is uh, um, governed under geographical indications of goods registration and protection act 1999 with the object to provide registration and better protection of geographical indications relating to goods now what is geographical indication geographical indication is a sign or indication is a sign which is used on products that have a specific geographical origin and possess qualities or a reputation that are due to the that origin so geographical indication is primarily granted to agricultural products natural products manufactured handicrafts originating from a particular territory or a definite geographical territory so for example there are uh, very limited applications um, for all over so far since 
2004, the first GA was granted to Darjeeling tea. And so far, there are C370 geographical indications awarded by Registry of India that is located in Chennai. And last year, there were total 32 applications were filed and uh, a total number of 23 geography indications were registered. Now, this is a uh, lot of 370. If you look at, uh, there are a lot of geographical indication that we have Aramula Kanadi from Kerala and then Darjeeling tea uh, uh, from, uh, you see this place, uh, this is the supposed to be, uh, I think somewhere here, Darjeeling tea is available. Darjeeling tea is also one of the uh, product that it has got. Uh, but today, if you ask me, it has expired its uh, geographical indication because it has crossed 15 years. Now, if you look at the state-wise, um, Kerala has got 27 geographical indication registration so far. Karnataka is the one leading, followed by Maharashtra and other states in India. Total so far awarded only 370. Now, the most important section that we are going to now discuss is the third and final section. Why innovation is uh, important in academia? Intellectual property rights policy is encouraging innovation and creativity for academia. Because if you look at how talented minds what do they do in academia or in academic institution they create and innovate so to nurture the spirit of innovation and to translate these into products process and service for commercial exploitation commercial exploitation is very important because that is the industrial application we have to foster creativity of intellectual property rights through promotion and management of IP in academic institutions. So this is very important. So research-led education, promoting innovation, collaboration and fostering human values are certain values that are trying to be developed in every academic institution by fostering uh, creativity and promoting and manage, through the management of intellectual property rights. Already I have explained in the first part how UGC, how NIRF, how New Education Policy and National Education Policy 2016, etc. are now making academic institutions. It is very imperative for academic institution to uh, promote and manage IP. So what higher educational institutions can do? They can foster innovation and creativity in the areas of technology, sciences, humanities by nurturing new ideas and research in an ethical environment. This ethical environment is the complexity that we will explain in the final part of this. To protect intellectual property rights that are generated by faculty, students, non-teaching staff, etc. in an academic institution and translate their creative and innovative works into industrial application. This is, is most importantly should be done by academic institutions. In order to do that, academic institutions should evolve a policy that is efficient, fair, transparent in administrative process. Because the ownership and control of intellectual property rights, sharing the revenues or benefit sharing, these are going to be very complex issues in academic institutions. So we in academic institutions should know that how a research is taking place, what are the, who are the stakeholders in the research, and when an innovation is uh, happening, how it has to be taken to uh, for registration or application or patent, etc., and who, what are the agreements that we need to do, whether publication has to be done, and how benefit is being shared, and how license and assignments are done, etc., that is what we are going to look at in this. So academic institution can also promote collaboration between academic and industry. This is very much lacking in India. There is no interface between industry, society and academic institutions. For example, St. Mary's College, you may have a very good lab there, maybe a limited lab, etc. 
your teachers can go to another institution and co make a collaboration or um, once you have a patented uh, invention you have to find out an industry to commercialize and industrial apply in order to license that product so that society benefit out of this also knowledge generation is not the only act or function academic institution commercial exploitation also need to be uh, encouraged so the significance of ip is the commercialization every academic institution is supposed to establish an ip cell in its institutional uh, framework to promote innovation creativity and also ipr value initial values of I, ipr among students research scholars and faculty members why ip is important in an, in an academic institution because through intellectual property rights students are able to create nurture build strengthen creativity and innovation and they learn these values so a student focused policies need to be initiated and supported by students especially in the light of a uh, india has got a great advantage of young population and we are greatly promoting the startup ecosystem across india and in the infrastructures and the amenities of the academic institution should be offered to the students to build and sustain a creative and innovative environment so that the the talented minds create and innovate and then transform them into industrial applications but there is one most important thing why ip becomes a complex issue in academic institutions there is inventor there is researcher there is a, a, a scholarship fund and um, collaborators then industrial collaboration so there there are various stakeholders that are going to be involved with the research so the, it becomes an important thing because academic institution need to have the knowledge of all these stakeholders how they can be engaged how they can be appointed or brought into the academic institution for example all the teachers who are listening to me you are all appointed by an academic institution and if you do any invention any innovation by using the infrastructures or using the ownership of that particular invention goes to academic institution Hello. 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 Hello, sir, you are not audible.
ഒന്ന് വിളിക്കാമോ ഓ ഹലോ ഹലോ അമ്മ ഓഡിബിൾ നൗ ഫോർ കൊളാബറേഷൻ വിത്ത് നെസസറി സോ എക്സ്റ്റേണൽ പാർട്ട്നേഴ്സ് ഇൻക്ലൂഡ്സ് uh monetary support and research through grants or fellowships that are you are getting through uh, dst or ugc or icssr etc so all these makes this context of research very complex in nature so the most important thing is that who are the researchers in an academic institution i already explained that they include student teachers technical staff but let me tell you many of the times teachers have a very reluctance to acknowledge and encourage students into uh, research process that is not fair students need to be given their due share students need to be given their authorship co-authorship etc so students means undergraduate students postgraduate doctoral post doctoral students etc of the academic institutions and also visiting scientist for example um, i also work as a visiting professor in a st- university called stumi state university in ukraine i have two phd students over there and they work under me and so we need to encourage and they are doing research and they, they give me authorship all those things also need to be so this collaborative effort need to be initiated and encouraged and use of the resources it's very important i don't know many of the times academic institutions in india is very reluctant to provide the academic institutions resources to uh, students teachers etc but things are changing now fast academic institutions are offering everything to researchers and um, uh, because nir of nac etc is giving great importance to patents so when we have various kinds of stakeholders in the research there is there is lot of necessary to have agreements for example teachers when you are appointed you get an agreement a letter of uh, mou from academic institutions so your research service your cooperative research the development agreement material transfer confidentiality consultancy all these kind of issues need to be addressed and regulated in order to promote and advance uh, intellectual property rights and the most crucial issue is this an inventor need to be paid his due by the institution that is called royalty you understand for the legal use of a patent invention or the, the intellectual property rights that is licensed and also the sufficient disclosure is a most imperative thing for example when you do an innovation or invention or a registration or a copyright etc the most important fact is the a detailed description of the features of essential for carrying out the invention into industrial application so it is very necessary that invention into practice a sufficient disclosure is necessary so people should remember that public exhibition of an invention is a very important prerequisite for before filing a patent but publication if you publish a information regarding a patent then your novelty is lost so novelty is one of the crucial criteria for getting patented but in certain cases under indian patent act 1970 12 months grace period is given so from the date of publication you can but you have to go through chapter 6 patent act section 29 and 34 it is very elaborate your documents gives us detailed conditions where a published invention can be patented but it is always necessary that a, a 
pet uh, an invention should never use lose its novelty because novelty is one of the most important criteria for getting patent so inventions and inven innovations that cannot be patented i already explained to the chapter 2 of the indian patent uh, patents act 1970 Uh, which we have previous invention uh, and anything related to atomic energy etc but one of the most important thing in the copyright there is a doctrine called doctrine of fair dealing for example now i published an article which is in rowledge and uh, um, can i uh, share that material with my students for the purpose of education for the purpose of research for the purpose of critic for the purpose of review etc the copyright act 1957 allow us something called the doctrine of a fair dealing this can you can use such a kind of uh, materials for private use this fair dealing fair dealing means with an acknowledgement simply note that you uh, use it uh, for you need to when you uh, use it if it is in a publication at and if it is non published work or copyrighted work etc please make sure that you get appropriate required permission from the author or the creator so that you don't fall into the trouble of plagiarism because plagiarism is not only a moral issue it is a, a, a it's a very uh, li- illegal practice you know ugc has already come out with a notification regarding this to encourage how we need to because we all teachers publish so we need to be very careful that we don't fall into and in law i will tell you ignorance is not a consideration ignorance will not be considered for documentation and rain check see in order to before you uh, reach for an application to be patented or applying for a patent all agreements that how you have enter into with all the various stakeholders especially researcher academic institutions licenses and uh, various resources funds and sources of resources all these you need to be properly documented this is very important and if you go for any kind of trademark please make sure through a process called rain check that a prior public search for trademark would prove beneficial before choosing a name or a brand name because such names are not existing ownership of ip already i expect, uh, explained to you that the uh, because of the primary institution that is going to be important is called the academic institution so any kind of ownership that is uh emerging out of a patent invention is pi- primarily vested with the academic institution it's very important especially in the case of patents but if a researcher or a teacher or a student has utilized his own time unrelated to the responsibility towards academic institution then that um, uh, patent or that invention shall be vested with the that particular individual or the teacher or the student in the case of copyright this is a very complex issue authorship is given to the particular uh, contributor or the uh, writer or the student etc especially with authors in terms of project dissertation etc but if you have any kind of mooc or films plays or musical works or institutional materials etc the exclusive right belongs to uh, academic institution and but the moral right this is a very complex issue the ownership and the any kind of transfer of rights etc completely vested with the academic institution but any kind of moral issues like plagiarism or any kind of dispute etc that will be on others trademarks in terms of ownership all trademarks involving the academic institution shall orderly vested with the academic institution complete ownership but if in that student or a teacher or a scholar has used his own her own time and resources etc then such a kind of ownership will be vested with uh, that particular individual this is same with the here also the academic institution has got the primary ownership in terms of industrial designs uh, provided uh, that uh, he or she is engaged the, or utilized the resources of academic institution platform resources etc but if it is not the case then 
the oh, particular student or a teacher or a um, uh, person has got that right same academic institution is the primary ownership of uh, any kind of semi integrated circuits and the plant variety also provided you, uh, you uh, the academic institution provide all the platform and resources etc um this is a very complex issue because many of the times research and innovation engage in multiple attitudes i told you that um there will be uh, no industrial application is a very important thing so royalty is a question licensing is a question etc in that context uh, the specific agreement between academic institution and the external partner who is going to provide support for research the ip rights shall be shared among the all the concerned parties and the licensing and revenue sharing also need to be very clearly documented and established through an agreement it is very important and when you come to licensing and assignment what is most important is that both are same in terms of if you look at it involves right uh, certain rights to another party in terms of transferring but the most important difference is that assignment involves transfer of ownership while license is limited to permitting certain uses only so if you are uh, using complete ownership to uh, of your intellectual or in property rights to someone else or a patent that is called assignment but licensing is your primary patent ownership is with you and you are only giving license to use uh, to maybe to the industry or to maybe to a uh, industrialist etc so there are three kinds of licensing one is called exclusive licensing that you exclusively give to one licensee non exclusive licensing that you give certain part to certain people and then something to other people sub licensing is very simple that when a licensee wishes to further license that then he takes the permission from the patent owner to uh, you know give sub licensing of the licensing so these are the three but the most important is the difference between licensing and assignment assignment means transfer of ownership of the uh, patent ownership whereas the licensing is you give only um, your patent uh, patented invention for industrial application these days the most important promotion that take place across india we have digital india startup india skill india etc so entrepreneur activities of the staff is encouraged by the academic institutions and they have been given lot of uh, no uh, what is called incentives encouragements etc by academic institutions and they should involve in giving that and there should be for example certain times institution say that we have we need only patent ownership for first five years and after uh, then the researcher or the inventor can take the ownership and exclusive rights etc so these kind of arrangements are encouraged to uh, uh, encourage students teachers and research scholars to engage into inventions and innovations and uh, one of the most important thing is that the license agreements and the revenue sharing who is supposed to license provide the cost of um, getting patent applications and etc this is primary responsibility of uh, the institution and that could in in certain cases um you uh, know you academic institution can enter uh, into a kind of agreement with the revenue sharing with the researchers and especially when it goes for commercialization and industrial application most of the time it is 60 40 60 will go to the researcher and 40% of the royalty will go to the academic institution and uh, um if many of the cases for example patent uh applic patent protection is for 20 years but even if it is for 20 years every year you need to renew it many of the cases academic institution doesn't do that uh, renewal so researcher uh, how to follow it up and once the researcher do is that he can deduct that cost from the filing of application and the maintenance of such ip etc from the uh, income accruing accruing from the commercial exploitation you understand so then um, the researcher may may share uh, continue to be paid or share the revenue etc even if they are not part of the uh, institution because that will 
you know encourage the uh, other scholars also greatly involved into invention and innovations benefit sharing among researchers because uh, in a lab there will be lot of researchers professor there will be phd scholars will be there uh, master students will be there and non teaching staff etc so there should be a kind of agreement that is uh, uh, no created among how the distribution of royalty will take place among um, various researchers what is their contribution etc such agreement can be changed with the consent among the uh, researchers mostly the revenue that is got by the research institution that is the 40% 60 early i it, uh, told you out of this 40% 50% of the revenue as per the indian government they say that institution should uh, invest for ip management fund as a institution ip management fund and 10% of that uh, royalty should be used for administrative charges and uh, 40% of that uh, such a fund should be used for purchase of equipment materials or annual maintenance etc so uh, when there is a copyright issue most of the time if teachers um, have got any kind of royalty in india normally uh, institution academic institution doesn't involve in uh, uh, such a kind of stake claiming the stake etc but uh, academic institution has got a non exclusive right because the teachers have used the infrastructure and the platforms and lab etc etc normally academic institution doesn't uh, claim but they have a right i already told you that they have uh, complete right over uh, lecture videos moots etc uh, on non exclusive right no you need not share with the um that such a kind of royalty or license etc with even with the researchers etc for example i will tell you this video you can um, use it for commercial purpose etc because that is how the um, um maybe you can use it um already i told you that there are stakeholders like a collaboration is necessary um and th there will be um, collaboration necessary for industrial application or for uh, and, or for finding funds or for using other laboratories etc so such a kind of uh, cases uh, you need to have an agreement signed between academic institution and external partner at the beginning of such collaboration how you will utilize the ip uh, revenue sharing the royalty etc Uh, certain times what happens is that uh, uh, the licensee has not taken adequate steps for commercialization for example an academic institution has got a patent right on a particular uh, uh, invention and you have given an a uh, license to an industrial industry but that industry is not uh, making use steps for commercialization or for producing such invention into for the benefit of the society in that uh, context academic institution can reconsider or revoke the license and then um, under the due process available laws that are available in india and uh, such uh, issue can be taken up and commercialization of technologies and invention etc is very important that is limitation of the liability for example when you Uh, give this license to an industry industrialization or industry etc uh, and they make the products out of this inventions and if there is any kind of service obligations any kind of defect etc academic institution doesn't have any liability it is the industry or the uh, the person who is producing or using commercialization of the uh, product they have the liability to uh, provide a service or Uh, no replays etc um many of the times i told you that um many of the context the academic institution is the sole or owner of ip in india especially but i told you that uh, many a times it is greatly shared with the scholars and innovators and students etc to encourage them and uh, uh, there will be agreement and provisions relating to benefit sharing license agreements revenue sharing etc um the if ip ownership is shared with external par partners the cost for ip protection may be shared with both the parties especially based on the agreement that are uh, explained in the terms and conditions 
it is always preferable that any cost involved in the transfer of rights ownership of the academic institution owned by ip may be borne exclusively by the licensee licensee means the person who is acquiring such rights it is not any kind of um, when you license an invention to a, a third party always such kind of expenses are borne or borne by the licensee or the person who is acquiring such rights um this is very important um, i told you that academic institution today in order to keep up their nrf ranking and etc they waive their um, uh, ip rights and encourage um, their scholars you understand or they certain times say that um, we need only ip rights for a particular tenure and after that um, Uh, it is gone but these kind of agreement these kind of terms and conditions etc need to be explained very clearly in the agreement with the academic institution um, with the external party research scholars students etc otherwise all the ip um, uh, rights royalty etc goes to academic institution it is for their rights um, ip resources even if you license it Uh, to a third party you have to very clearly remember that it is conditional on environmental safety uh, and good manufacturing practice need to be followed and uh, the industrialist and the third party need to uh, truthfully claim or and give all the information to customers and any kind of liability that arise from from such a kind of industrial application will not be on educational institution or on university it is the industrialist responsibility or the third party's responsibility so um this i already explained to you that that any kind of liability that is emerged from um you know infringement or not infringing ip of the third party etc such a kind of uh what is called all the permissions agreements etc need to be taken by um uh by the academic institution the research institutions etc it is very important uh because these days lot of complexities and legal litigations take place in ip uh protection and and if two application comes at the same time to a um um to the Uh, patent or registry etc then the first come first be uh, 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 um, pro, uh, no first come first serve is the principle that is served even if it is only half minute or seconds it doesn't matter they will take will only consider the first application um it's already i explained that you need to take under the indian copyright law one of the major thing is that maybe teachers may have publications etc um, and institution may request that the publication should be disclosed to with the students D disclosing with the students is okay if it is for uh, no fair dealing according to the indian copyright act but you have no right to publish that articles in institutional repository you may give a link to that but you cannot uh, because that exclusive rights of such publications are with the journals but these days um, you know there is lot of in house publications given and we um, even open software is encouraged by government of india etc confidentiality data protection and privacy uh, this is very important ethics that a researcher or a inventor should know that yeah, you have a primary responsibility you may be a staff of an academic institution so uh, certain times the uh, when money and royalty questions etc comes um, there will be problems with academic institutions and researchers and students etc but most important thing is that the protection is based on confidentiality of the data so such a confidentiality should be maintained in terms of even academic institution researchers uh, or the stakeholders in involved in the um, in the invention and the innovations and if confidentiality uh, need not be followed if such a confident information is available in the public domain if law requires such 
uh, information to be shared in the public domain or if um, such a data or innovation is done by independently by a research scholar so no obligation of confidentiality need to be maintained otherwise all the stakeholders need to maintain confidentiality data protection and privacy publication most important factor i told you um, whenever an innovation or invention is going to for patent if there is it is already published you will lack your um, uh, novelty so be careful of doing but exhibition of um, for such innovation or invention is necessary as a prior requisite for uh, patent inventions and always it is always good that academic institution and researchers have a joint agreement on the modalities of who owns the uh, royalty who owns the publications etc um, so it is should be very clear no publication is made till the patent is applied you understand the um, exclusive right is any kind of disputes that emerge from a ownership question that emerge because of the invention licensing um, between and among academic institution so uh, funded research scholars etc uh, a committee of experts need to be formed in the academic institution and that committee of experts will be examined and try to mitigate and uh, uh, resolve that issue within the institution if it is not able to be resolved by within the institution then such can be taken to alternative dispute resolution mechanism and arbitration conciliation mediation or appellate court etc so in the uh, etc institution that are nearest to the academic institution this is very important so dear friends what we were so far discussing were that why academic institution what are the policy imperatives of ip promotion fostering creativity management of intellectual property rights etc in academic institutions through various policy prescriptions by nirf ugc act and uh, uh, national ip policy we have also discussed three species including patent copyright designs um plant variety various laws that are governing geographic indications etc we have also discussed the complexities associated with ownership of uh, patent innovations etc the various stakeholders involved in research especially the academic institution the fund providing sources the research scholars students etc and the most important thing is that the novelty should be protected though there are uh, requirements of exhibition of um, patents etc and any kind of disputes that are arised from um, any kind of issues related to innovation research etc then there should be a, a committee formed within the uni, uh, institution and there should be an establishment of ip cell within Uh, in the institution so thank you so much i'm sorry because my um, 